Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Koo Tigers mini PC with LCD screen. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase this, I'll put a link to it in the description and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this is kind of a unique product. It's a mini PC. This has 12 gig of RAM and a 512 SSD with a built-in screen, has a built-in battery. So it has some attributes of a tablet. It's also similar to like an all-in-one, but smaller. So this has Wi-Fi, it has an Intel N150 processor, Windows 11 Pro, LCD screen. It also has gigabit ethernet. It also has Bluetooth 5.2, but let's get it open. Here we have a user manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So we have some notes. It says when you turn it on, do not connect it to ethernet or Wi-Fi. So when you boot a new Windows computer, it can be faster if you don't have it connected to a network. Then it has other setup notes there. Well, if we go further back here, we have, looks like the ports. So we'll just look at this stuff on the computer itself. So here's the computer. Let's pull it out. So we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Here we're going to have accessories and such. So we have a display port cable and an HDMI cable. And here we have a power adapter. So this has USB-C, and this is a 45 watt gallium nitride charger, and it's USB-C power delivery, and it has a number of different voltages it supports. So it's nice it uses a pretty standard power supply. The cord is a little over four feet long. It has a flip out plug. So let's take a look at this. So this has a pop out kickstand on it. It looks like it could go back quite a ways. So you can have this sit up high, or you can have it sit down lower, like so. We have speakers on the bottom. We have rubber feet here. I put the tape on here to cover some serial numbers. The rubberized feet, so if that's sitting down, it's not going to slide. If we go to the side, we have a bunch of ports. So it looks like the other side we have a vent. And then we have ports on the top and side. So we have micro SD, two USB ports. I'm guessing those are 2.0, and these would be 3.0 ports. We have USB type C. Here we have PD, so that would be the power input. Then we have display port, HDMI, two ethernet ports, audio, so that would be headphone and microphone, and the power port, and then we have a vent here. So let me set that down like so. So this has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. The Amazon page says you can get around four hours of video playback, music, or light work. So let's hold this down. Okay, so it looks like it's powering on. So to turn on, you just hold the power down. That's booting up. While that's booting, let me get some sizing on here. So that's about seven and five eighths by just over four and seven eighths. It looks like it's just under seven eighths inch thick. Okay, so we're gonna have setup here. I don't know how much of this I'll go over, but this will be standard Windows 11 setup. So for internet, I said I don't have internet. Now I do, and I'll set that up later. So it wants me to set up an account. Okay, so I created my credentials. So it has privacy settings here. I'm going to turn off some of these. So this is going to go through the setup. I'm going to skip ahead here. Okay, so it's almost booted up. Now it did ask me to plug it in. I wanted to try it without, but when you do this, you should plug it in. I can look down here at the bottom to see how much battery it has. It's 81%. So let me go ahead and plug this in. So that's going to plug into the PD on the top. And now it's charging. And it's currently charging around 37 watts. Now that can vary depending on state of charge of the battery. What we have here is a Windows desktop. So the resolution on the screen is 1280 by 800. Let's try rotating this. Okay, so we can rotate just like we could a tablet. Now you can use this with just the touch screen, but it's super easy to add a keyboard and mouse if you want. So here I have a keyboard and mouse. Now this one has a USB dongle. It also supports Bluetooth, so I could hook up Bluetooth if I wanted an easier setup, but I'll just do the dongle for now. Now I would recommend plugging these in the slower USB ports. You don't need the fast ports for a keyboard. So I'll plug that in, I'll turn it on. And now we have a keyboard and mouse. Now let's try plugging in some other things. Let's go ahead and test Ethernet. So I'm going to plug into my network here. I'll open up a web browser. And I have a speed test on my network. 
So this is hosted on one of my servers. I'll hit start here. So here I got 959 down and 990 up. Let's try the other port. Okay, and we got 800 down and 1002 up. Now this may not be super accurate. There can be varying conditions that can change this, but it gives you a rough idea of the network performance. Now this also supports Wi-Fi 6. Let me connect to a Wi-Fi network. Okay, I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Let's test this out. Okay, so we got 449 down and 455 up. So that's some very good Wi-Fi performance. That's plenty of speed for streaming, gaming, and that's pretty decent for transferring files too. So this can be used on its own, but you can also plug in monitors. So I have an HDMI cable here, a plug in. And here we have a second monitor. So I can go into my settings here and I'll go to system display and I'll click on where it says duplicate these displays and I'll change it to extend these displays. And here it's saying keep changes. So now I have two displays. I need to rearrange these. I will put this down below. Okay, I need to apply this. There we go. So now I can move my mouse up to go to the top screen and down to the bottom. Let me see if I can move this back and forth here. So I could potentially be using this monitor as my main display, and then maybe I would have some notes or a calendar on the smaller display, just like you would do with any two display system. This also supports DisplayPort, so I'll connect up to a DisplayPort here. So here I have a DisplayPort display, I'll plug into it. And now we have three displays being shown here. So I have this in kind of an L shape. If I go to the right, I'm going to go to this screen here. And if I go up, I'll go to this screen. Let's try a third display. Here I have a USB-C portable display. I'll plug into USB-C on the side. I'm going to plug into the monitor. Now it's showing all four here, but it is not seeming to work. Let me try unplugging it. We'll plug back in. So I don't know if it's that display or the computer. Let's try unplugging one of the other displays. So it didn't seem to support three external displays, but it did support two. So with two external displays and this, you have three screens. And this is actually a 4K monitor here. So this is putting off some heat here. You can feel it coming out here. Now I've had this kind of propped up. We can put this down and set it like this. So if you're using this like a traditional mini PC, you could do that. It would not be super easy to see the screen. I think it makes more sense to prop it up, at least just a little bit. So this has 12 gig of RAM and it has 512 SSD. The SSD is SATA. So I'll download the benchmark software and we'll get that tested. Okay, so here I have Crystal Disk Mark. I'll run the test. I'm going to speed through this, and then we'll get to the results. Okay, the test is completed. We got 520 megabytes per second read and 508 write, and that's about what you'd expect from SATA SSD. So it's not as fast as NVMe, but in my experience, that's still plenty fast, especially for a mini PC. So that's the Koo Tigers mini PC with built-in LCD display. I think this is a very interesting form factor for a PC. You have a traditional mini PC with the built-in display and a battery. So you have everything you have in a traditional mini PC, but you have some added benefits here. The battery acts as a built-in UPS. So if the power goes out, you're not going to lose your work. You can also take this on the go. For certain applications, you might just use this as the only screen. In others, you might hook it up to another screen. I think this could work very well as a project computer for different tasks. This could pair well with a CNC machine or maybe a 3D print farm where you have some 3D print software on here and you monitor it. You could use this with security software, maybe something like Blue Iris. Now, since this is powered with USB-C, you could use something like a portable power bank to power it. So you want to make sure you use a power bank that supports power delivery and that will extend the battery if you want to use this for portable use. In a corporate environment, you could maybe have this on a podium connected up to a projector. So this would be the control screen to control the projector. So you would switch your slides on here and then it would show the slides on the projector. This could work well for automotive applications or for maybe an RV. You could use this for home assistant to build a control panel. There's lots of uses for this. Now this doesn't have any mounting options on the back. 
but it wouldn't be hard to make a bracket that this could fit into. And you can get universal brackets that will hold things like this. So if you're looking for something in between a mini PC and a tablet, something like this could be a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.